back again with a few thoughts on vectors. All right, thank you for coming by. Um, this is just going to be um, just a bunch of different little things on vectors that um, I want you to know about. Okay, so let's um, let's first take a look at two vectors, two vectors A and B. And here we are. Here's here's vector A and here's vector B. Um, now there are two ways to um, write these vectors um, that I want you to consider. Um, vector A can be written um, as the following. We can say that it's 10 meters, 30 degrees um, to the positive x-axis. If I don't write anything here, that just means relative to the positive x-axis. So that's one way to write that. Or we could um, use unit vectors, and um, the way that you use unit vectors is you're going to break this into an x and a y component. Those are the two components. Notice that the two components add to give you 10 meters. They add vectorally to give you 10 meters. Not if in a scalar way, but vectorally. If you do the cosine of 30 degrees times 10 meters, you will get this to be um, about 8.6 seven, I'll go with 8.6 meters. If you do the sine of 30 degrees times 10 meters, you're going to get um, five meters. And so I can write vector A like this in terms of unit vectors. I can say that it's um, a positive 8.6 meters in the I direction. And if you did your reading, you know that the I direction that I is a unit vector, and it points in the positive x direction. So I'm multiplying a scalar times a vector, and it and it keeps the direction being in the positive x direction. And then um, the y component is 5 meters, but this time that's in the j direction. So there's two ways to write vectors. One way is with a magnitude and a direction. The other is by giving the two components. Let's do the same thing for B. Vector B, we can say that uh, B is 5 meters. And um, relative to the x-axis, that's 180 plus another 30. So that's 210 degrees relative to the x-axis. Okay, if I use unit vectors, however, then um, if I get these components, what I'm going to find is that if this is 30 degrees and if that's 5 meters, then um, this is going to be 2.5 meters. And then this side, even though I, it doesn't look like it because it didn't draw it to scale, um, this side is going to be 4.33 meters. So again, um, let's write it in unit vectors. So in the x direction, that's negative 4.33 meters times the i, the unit vector i, plus 2.5 meters times the unit vector j. Oh, that's a negative right there. Okay, um, what's nice about writing things in terms of unit vectors, though, is um, it's really add, easy to add these two once they're in unit vector form. If you want to add unit vectors, um, A and B, the resultant of A and B is just, you can just take their two I components and add them up, Okay, so that's going to be um, about 13 meters. Oh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Sorry about that. It's going to be about, because this one's negative, it's going to be um, about 4.33 meters. And that's in the I direction. Plus, if I add the J directions up, that's going to be about 2.5 meters. 
in the J direction. Now what I have here is a recipe for um, getting the resultant vectors magnitude and direction. All I'm going to do is tell me to go over 4.33 in the positive direction and then up two and a half. So this is two and a half meters and this is 4.33. This is the res what the resultant vector looks like. That's R. And to get the magnitude, I will just simply uh, use the Pythagorean theorem, square these and add them together and take the square root. So the magnitude of R is just going to be 2.5 meters squared plus 4.33 meters squared and then square root it. If I want to get this angle, the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis, then maybe I can do, um, I can use tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side, two and a half all over meters all over um, 4.33 meters. Okay, so that's just how you handle unit vectors. Unit vectors uh, are just a nice way to keep track of vectors. Okay, a couple other things. When you do have um, a scalar times a vector, I want you to know that you do get a vector quantity and the vector quantity you get when you multiply, say, a scalar mass times a vector velocity, that's a that's velocity is a vector, what you get is um, you get um, another vector quantity, and the vector quantity you get will always have the same direction as the V. So momentum is the same direction as V, always. You can count on that. The momentum P will always be in the same direction as V. Even if you divide by a scalar, it doesn't change the actual direction. So, you know that in Newton's second law, A equals F net over M. Well, the F net, when you divide by a scalar, doesn't change the direction at all. So A and F net are always in the same direction. Always. A and F net are always in the same direction. V average is uh, delta x a vector divided by a scalar. So delta x, the, that's called the displacement, the change in position or the displacement, that's always in the same direction as v average. A average is always in the same direction as delta v because you're taking that vector and you're just dividing by a scalar times a scalar. So it doesn't change its direction. All right, a couple other things about vectors. If you have um, an object that's accelerating and it's moving, when the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction, then um, this will be speeding up. When these two are in the same direction, the object will be speeding up. When they are in completely opposite directions, when V is the opposite way of A, then you are going to be slowing down. So you might wonder, what happens then if it's not opposite to or in the same direction, but it's like at a right angle, if that's a right angle? Well, the answer is that it won't be speeding up or slowing down. It's just going to be turning. So the object is turning, but keeping the same speed. Maintaining same speed. I'm going to stop there for now because I'm out of time. Thank you.